In today's video, we're diving into the Factory 5 818R build. We'll take a closer look at the Subaru adapted suspension brakes, a custom designed fuel system with a bunch of one off 3D printed parts, the 2006 WRX driveline we'll be adapting, and I want to give a special thanks to the owner Dave for giving me the opportunity to be a part of this build. This is my little Subaru only shop. It's a DIY Subaru channel. It's a channel where all I do is Subaru builds and race Subaru vehicles and motorsport events. It's a DIY themed channel where I walk you guys through the steps to get your Subarus back on the road and hopefully do a little racing of your own. So thanks for checking out the video guys. I really appreciate it. What the hell is this thing? You guys are looking at a Factory 5 818R chassis. That's right guys, this thing is a kit car made by a company called Factory 5 this is their 818R model, which is actually their competition model. And this kit car uses a WRX as its donor car. As you can see right here, as you probably noticed, that lower control arm looks familiar. That's a lower control arm from a 2006 WRX. And then you actually have a coilover shock right here. And this is actually a Kony coilover shock. It's a Kony red single coilover. And as most coilovers are, this one is actually adjustable right here with that lower collar. So that actually gives you some adjustability in the ride height for these kit cars. And then as you move over right here to the spindle, you'll see they actually have a custom little bracket right here that extends that spindle and allows you to use that coilover shock in place of the original McPherson strut design. And then moving up here to the top, you'll see there's actually a fully adjustable upper A-arm that actually comes with a kit from Factory 5. So you'll see there's adjustment points right here, and adjustment points on this side. And I'll just mention these are really kind of thick and heavy duty hardware. And of course you have a Zerk fitting right here so you kind of grease these ball joints. Because these spindles are factory spindles, you'll use the factory OEM rotors and OEM calibers as well. These are the 06 and 07 calibers. These are the four pot fixed calibers, but I believe you can also use the floating calibers as well. And then moving over here to the rack and pinion, that's also a stock factory rack and pinion unit from the WRX, the donor car. But this rack and pinion is not gonna use the power system for it. So it's actually gonna be converted to a manual rack and pinion setup. And the Factory 5 kit actually comes with a little bracket that allows you to mount this rack and pinion unit. But that little bracket is really kind of cheap and chintzy. So the owner of this car actually 3D printed this little bracket to have a lot more secure mounting for that rack and pinion. And speaking of 3D printing, if we move over here to the fuel cell, there's actually another 3D printed item I want to talk about in a little more detail. Speaking of 3D printed components, this fuel cell right here, which is actually a jazz fuel cell, it's a five gallon fuel cell. The owner of this car actually 3D printed this filler neck right here and this filler cap. And that actually allowed him to use a factory style drop-in Walboro fuel pump that actually bolts this 3D printed filler neck. That way you can have everything cleanly installed in the front end of this vehicle. And this 3D printed fuel neck is actually carbon impregnated nylon. And the software that was used to design this filler neck and all the 3D parts on this vehicle is actually called Fusion 360. And that's free software that you guys can actually download and you can use to design 3D printed parts for your vehicle too. What you're looking at right here is actually the outlet. This is a Dash 6 AM fuel outlet, but he actually has a little adapter so he can switch this from a Dash 6 to a Dash 8. And then of course right here, this is the wiring for that fuel pump. And then this is a vent right here. So it's a really cool custom setup for this fuel tank on the front end of this vehicle. And incidentally, one of the reasons he's putting the fuel tank in the front end of this car is because there's not a lot of weight on the front of these cars. Now the Factory 5 kit actually includes a gas tank, but that gas tank is actually mounted behind the driver's seat. And the owner of this car actually wanted to redesign that system because moving more weight to the front of this vehicle is actually gonna help a lot with the suspension and the balance for the vehicle. So that's why he's actually got this five gallon fuel cell that he's put in the front of this vehicle. And he's also gonna put the battery and several other components in front of this vehicle. That way he gets as much weight to the front end of this car to balance out all the weight from the engine and the back of the vehicle. And incidentally, I'll mention that this fuel cell is only five gallons and that's not very large, but the owner, Dave, actually designed that to be the exact amount that he needs for track use and he actually has auxiliary fuel cells that you can add to this fuel cell to actually give it more volume if he needs more mileage in the future. Okay, and taking a closer look at this steering column, this is actually a factory WRX steering column, but the owner of this car, Dave, he actually wanted to lower the steering column a couple inches, so he actually fabricated this custom CNC block right here to lower the mounting point for the steering column, and he actually printed this custom 3D bracket right here using that carbon fiber impregnated nylon, and this little bracket actually allows him to have full adjustability for the steering column. He can actually loosen this bolt right here and not actually allow this steering column to slide up and down inside this little slot right here, which is a very cool little 3D printed component for this kit car. Okay, and the first thing we'll talk about here underneath the steering column is a pedal assembly. These are Willwood billet pedals. This is a brake pedal and a clutch pedal. This is actually an aftermarket pedal assembly, but you can also use the OEM factory pedals if you want to adapt those. 
But these Willwood pedals are really cool because they actually have dual reservoirs for the brake pedal and it allows you mechanical adjustability for the brake bias. And what I mean by that is this, check this out. So this is the brake pedal and if you move up right here, you'll see the brake pedal actually connects to two little rods right here and each of those rods goes to its own separate master cylinder. And you can actually adjust where this brake pedal pivots and hits those rods. So you can actually apply more or less force to each one of those rods individually. That way you can actually dial in your brake bias from front to rear. And then moving over here to the steering wheel, this is just an NRG D-shaped leather steering wheel with that quick release hub here on the back. And these hubs basically just release by depressing this little pin right here and popping them off like that. And of course for the driver's seat, you're looking at a Kirky race bucket right here, but this kit actually allows you to use the OEM seats as well. Okay, I'm here in the back half of the car. This is where that engine's gonna go. And as you guys can see right here to my left, this is an EJ255 engine that we'll be putting in this car. And this Subaru engine is actually gonna mount right where I'm sitting behind the driver's seat for that mid-engine layout. And then the transmission will actually bolt to the back of the engine and hang out the back of it. And that transmission will also be converted to two-wheel drive by only using the front differential. The rear portion of that transmission is actually gonna be blocked off and the pieces that you use to do that conversion actually come with that factory five kit. And this brace you see right here, this is actually removable and it serves as a chassis stiffening brace and it serves as a mounting point for the body. And in addition, I also mention that the factory OEM engine mounts and trans mounts are also used with this kit, which means you can actually upgrade those factory rubber bushings to something more robust like polygraphite or if you really wanted, something like a solid engine mount. And then last, for the suspension components, you can actually use a stock trailing arm and if you're not gonna lower your chassis, you can use a stock lateral links as well. But for this chassis, this is the 818R chassis, which is a competition race chassis. and actually has a lower ride height, which requires the use of adjustable lateral links. And last, let's talk about the color for this two frame chassis. You're looking at a Lamborghini red orange color. And the technical name for this color is Arancio Argos. Don't quote me on that pronunciation. That's my best shot. The last thing I'll mention guys, these factory five A18 kits actually come with all the panels needed. So he actually has all the sheet metal panels and he has all the exterior panels. These kits come complete and I believe they actually come color gel coated for those exterior panels. So you don't have to worry about having these cars painted when they're all done. It's a really nice cost saving benefit to using these factory five kits. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this little introduction of the Subaru powered kit car. Like I said, these are made by Factory 5, and this particular one is an 818R. And that R actually stands for the competition model. The non-competition model actually has a hard top, but this competition model is actually gonna have an open top, which actually allows this car to have a little bit less wind resistance and to be a little bit less weight, which is ideal if you plan on using that car for some track use. I'm gonna periodically revisit this car, and we're gonna follow this build on my Subaru Only channel. In addition to that, I'm going to help the owner get this engine prepped and get this engine ready to get installed in this car and then we'll actually be here to document him firing this car up for the first time and then getting this car out on the track and working out all the kinks. Now I'm sure you guys have a lot of questions, so if you have any questions, please go ahead and leave them in the comment section. And as always guys, if you need any maintenance parts or any performance parts for your Subaru, make sure you check out my Subaru only Amazon shop and I'll put a link in the description below. Okay guys, thanks a lot for checking out this video. I hope you follow me on this build. I hope you follow me on the rest of the videos where we document this 818R coming to life and making it onto the track for the first time. Thanks a lot for checking out the video guys. I really appreciate it. My name's Luke. You guys are watching a super only channel. Until next time guys, later!